In this step, we'll create the roundabout design. The first step in doing that is going to the Nova Point tab at the top and selecting the intersection tool. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to give this the name roundabout 1000. And in subtask of, I'm going to put that within 320 roundabouts. My alignment selection, I need to choose for two alignments that I have defined. My calculation basis will be the ground surface. Now I simply need to press finish and to actually begin changing the parameters that we have in there, I need to right click on my intersection task and press open. Once it's loaded, two dialogues will pop up. One of those is where we actually change the parameters for the roundabout. And one of them is a 2D view of the current state of it, depending on the parameters. Currently it's a four-way junction. We need to change this on the top left by selecting the O, which is the roundabout option. In here, we get all the options where we can change the uh, central uh, island itself and all the different legs. So we'll start off by changing the radius of our roundabout to 18 meters. We'll leave the width and the slope all the same. Going down to the island's area structure, I need to double click uh, on where it says description there and simply press next. In here, this is where we define our structure parameters. So things like the curb, the curb height and width, as well as the runover parameters. For our purposes, I'll leave it as default and press OK. Scrolling down onto my legs, uh, we can see I've got legs one, two, and assumed three and four, because it is a roundabout. And if we look on the right hand dialog as well, they are numbered one, two, three, and four. So you know which leg you're working with. The parameters that will change in here are the lane widths and the slopes, as well as the islands that we want to add. So let's go ahead and change the lane width right to 3.65 and change the slope to minus 0.025. I'll do the same for the other side. And then for our shoulder width, we want that to be 2.5 meters. And the slope to be negative 0 0.025 again. Once we've done that, we can copy the parameters that we've just put in there to every single leg. I can do that by right clicking where it says leg one at the top and selecting copy leg parameters. Now, if I go to leg two, I can paste. If I scroll down, we can see that it's changed my lane widths and my slopes that I've defined. I'll do the same for four. And then finally the same for five. And if we look on the right hand side as well, we can see that that is uh, updated in real time whilst I've changed it. Next, we need to add the islands that are within these legs. This is done under island type. This is a drop down, so I'll just open that down and select roundabout island. In here, I need to go down and define the area structure just like I did for that central roundabout. And this is going to be simple island. Then next and OK. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to do the same for each one of them. Now we've got all the islands done, as well as the central part of the structure. The final step that we need to do is actually choosing the, uh, the structure for the pavement uh, underneath the roundabout. So quick tip is at any given point, you can press the update button in the dialog here, uh, and it will uh, transfer the changes into the model itself. So if I go into here, I right click and view in 3D. I can see what is currently being built uh, by this intersection task and we don't have any road uh, surface or pavements below that. And that's defined in the select structure button down here. We're going to do intersection traffic area without side area as we're going to define it ourselves. 
Now press next. Now we're onto these structure parameters. So we're going to put these the same as what we're going to have for our road cross section. So for our wearing course, we'll start at 0.045. Binder will be 0.55. Binder 2 will be 0. Our base one will be 0 0.15. Base 2 will also be 0 0.15. Base 3 is 0. Our sub base to be 0 0.6. And then the rest of the values will be zeroed out like that. Now I can press OK. And if I update once again, we should start to see our structure forming. Like so. That looks great. And the final thing for us to do is uh, alter how far these arms actually go out. So in the top right of the dialog, I'm going to select handles. On my snapping interval, uh, I'm going to change that to uh, 10 meters. What this means is that uh, when I move the arms of the roundabout, they will snap to the nearest 10 meters of chainage. This just makes it easier for us to do the road later on, uh, as it'll be a nice whole number that we have to build the road between. I'm just going to drag it in my view here very simply. I'm using the middle middle mouse click uh, to, to drag the canvas around there. And I'm selecting on the end arrow and I'll drag it across. Now importantly here, I am, I'm looking to make the arm long enough to where the lines around the island converge back into the center line. So if I zoom in all the way here, for example, you can still see it's three lines. Then if I go to the end of our arm, it's one joined line. That's what we want on all of the arms. Let's take this further down. And then get onto this arm. Double check over here. Okay. Everything looks lined up. Uh, it's always better to have them too long than too short, so uh, you can go crazy with it if you like. Now I'll press the final update, I'll double check that we're happy with it, and then I'm going to press OK. Great, let's drag that out of the way and have a look. Everything looks good to go. So now I'm a dialogue, I'm just going to press OK. And that will finalize the changes that we've done. It's important to note that you shouldn't change the name uh, of your intersection task once you've defined it. So make sure that you get it right in the first instance, as it may cause issues otherwise. Now the next step is creating the main road that attaches to this. 